Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of How'd They Do That? Well, today on the show we have Kara Lane. She is a professional lifestyle photographer in Chandler, Arizona. She actually joined us here in the studio. So here's our conversation with Kara Lane. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today, Kara. Um, we have this question, and that is, what is a lifestyle photographer? Exactly what does that mean? Um, for me, it's the everyday. It's families, it's kids, it's newborns. It's what you would find in family lifestyle. And are these photos that you're publishing in magazines or are they uh, photos that are going on walls in people's homes? Um, we push, uh, we're, we're big into the, the gallery art for family homes. Well, we get a lot of questions for photographers, like lifestyle photographers. So um, can we start with the, the type of gear that you use? What cameras, lenses, those types of things? Okay, I'm a Canon shooter. I'm on the 5D Mark II and um, my number one lens is the 51.2. So it's about 95% of the time. And is it, you're always shooting just wide open? Always, yeah. With kids, the skin tone is just perfection with that. Mm -hmm. So. And uh, if you're shooting it with a different lens, mm -hmm. what lens is that? It would have to be the 7200, only to capture those moments that I don't want to be there. I want it mm -hmm. to be more like I'm looking on more documentary type. So it would be the right. 7200. But most of the time you're with the 50. Yep. Does that get a little strange because you have to really get in tight with those shots? Yeah, but that's that's my goal. I want to interact. I don't want to be away from it because I feel like the, I can get the connection with the children a lot more and I can capture those looks that just their parents are like, that's perfect, that's them. And that's what I want. So getting mm -hmm. in close is what I like to do. All right, well, let's talk about the light that okay. you use because mm -hmm. I live in Arizona mm -hmm. and I know that light here is just really a beast because it's it just really hard light that's it you know very directional. So. Um, when you're shooting, do you, what times of day do you shoot? Do you use any kind of fill flash? Do you use mm -hmm. any kind of, you know, what do you do? No fill flash. I don't carry a flash on me, actually. Um, my look is very organic and natural, so that's what I want to go towards. So my families or whoever I'm um, shooting at the time are scheduled either first thing in the morning for that soft light or last thing of the day right when the sun is setting. So I work around the and sun if, here. <laughs> yeah, and if people don't show up? <clears throat> on time? They, they know ahead of time. I stress that a lot because I'm a natural light photographer. I stress that a lot that on time is the number one importance to have enough time to document what we right. need to. So yeah, I usually don't have a problem. <laughs> awesome. Um, and no fill flash ever. Any reflectors? No, None. nothing. Just you, the nifty mm -hmm. 50 and the camera mm -hmm. and that's it. Yep. Right? Yeah. Very awesome. simple. I find that um, doing this for the amount of time that I have, I've definitely been able to find what works for me. and trying to catch up with kids and keep up with them throughout the shoot, I have to pack light and right. I have to be quick. So there's no, there's no chance to use flash with what Do I'm trying to get. Do you have an assistant to no. help you? No, It's just you. It's just me. What it's about? just me and the kids know me and I find that it's a lot more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So. Well, so how do you deal with kids? And when you say kids, are they little kids, older kids, teenagers? Um... It's both ends of the spectrum, everything in between. Um, I think being a mother, first and foremost, has really helped me do what I do. And um, I don't go into the shoots knowing exactly what I'm going to do or how it's going to go because with kids, it's completely up in the air at right. all times. So I find that just kind of treating them as if they were my own, at least the younger ones, um, you know, just getting down on their level, um, I think it makes them feel more comfortable. And I find mm -hmm. instead of shooting above them, shooting towards them really makes them feel comfortable like you're on their level. Right. So. And um, so the interaction of the, the parents and the children, mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've been on shoots. I don't shoot kids, but I've okay. been on shoots with people that do shoot kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and I find that usually the kids are not the issue, it's the parents. <laughs> right, right. You know, and so how yeah. do you, how do you uh, work with parents that want to maybe overly coach their kids? You know, that is something we talk about beforehand. Um, I, have, I have been on shoots where that has happened and mom's trying to get the perfect smiles, but when they come to me, they're getting a photographer who's not going for the traditional perfect family picture right. that we all know from years past. Right. The style more today for me is capturing the organic relationship between parents and their kids. So um, I do a lot of coaching beforehand so we can walk away with the pictures that I want, that they see on my site and want to walk away with. Right. But they don't realize that that doesn't take perfect saying cheese type so smiles. <laughs> what's the, let's talk about the workflow of mm -hmm. uh, how you do this. So let's say that I'm a, uh, a family and I want some photos mm -hmm. and I see your website. What happens next? There's a phone call? 
Uh, phone call, mostly email. Okay. I think um, because I work with moms a lot, email is so much easier these days. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have the kids screaming in the background. So they so. send you an email, mm -hmm. and then do you email or call or what goes? Next? Um, it depends. I have some moms that just say, you know, today's crazy. Can you email me back? And, you know, usually I'm emailing late at night because it's the only time I have. Mm -hmm. So most of the time it's email back, and then I will go on to do phone calls so we can really get to know each other. My main mm -hmm. focus from the beginning is to really connect with the family before we head on the shoot because a lot of people don't like to be on camera. So we want to make them as comfortable as possible. And so is that the coaching happens on the phone or is there an actual sit down <clears throat> meeting that happens before? Um, in the past, it's been on the phone. We do a lot of talking. We do a lot of, um, you know, I'll tell them what to expect exactly so there are no surprises. We are moving in the direction of doing um, sit down face to face um, consultations beforehand. So what are the, some of the things that you tell them to expect? I mean, do you ask them for certain outfits to avoid or to bring? Do you give yes. input on clothes? <clears throat> yes, uh, hair, we do. Like we definitely do wardrobe consultations just to make sure that although we want them to be organic and natural, we want them to look their best too. Right. I mean, the, my, my clients invest, you yeah. know, a good amount and I want them to walk away with the best that they can. Something that's good. So, so yes, definitely wardrobe consultation and we'll discuss. Um, I want them to really understand my style. So I don't have the parents coming on set and getting upset with their kids that may, you know, not be smiling like they think they should or, you know, things like that. So we will definitely talk about my style and make sure they understand it. Well, let's talk about um, the locations okay. that you shoot. Mm -hmm. Are these secret locations? Because um, <laughs> I'm like, I, I know what it looks like around Arizona, and you found some yeah, real gems. I try and keep them. Um, I mean, I'm willing to share at some, at, you know, certain points. I think there are some that I definitely like to keep secret that I found that are just amazing, and you know how it is. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many photographers in the industry, and places are right. <laughs> getting crowded. Um, I try and stay towards the more organic. As far as downtown and architectural you know, feel, it's really not my style. Now, if we have to do a shoot in the middle of the day, we will head somewhere like that because it'll block out the sun for right. me. Um, but for the most part, it's outdoors in an open field. It's an orchard. It's anywhere I can find that's green or right. you know, colorful, Good luck not here. just the dirt. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. it's definitely hard work. <laughs> so it's all the uh, the, the suburb mm -hmm. manis, Very. You know, manicure. Yeah, and it helps on the east side. You know, you've right. got a lot of the farming community out mm -hmm. there. So um, amazing photos, and Thank you've been you. doing this for a while. A lot of people that are watching us here are just beginning to do this mm -hmm. type of photography. Mm -hmm. So if you could rewind a few years, okay, and you know, and you could say back to your old self, mm -hmm. here are some things that you need to do. What would those things be? Do we have enough time for all that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> there are there's so much. Um, number one, I would say know your equipment, especially mm -hmm. when shooting. Um, kids and, and weddings for that matter, things move quickly. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to lose out on, right. you know, um, the perfect, the perfect images for your, for your clients. So and how have you learned your equipment? I have pushed myself. I think for about two years, I shoot manually a hundred percent of the time. Mm -hmm. And, um, for me knowing exactly what my camera can do for me and knowing when to choose what options to get what I want has really changed my work night and day difference. So I would say number one, know your equipment inside and out. Don't, don't fly off the cuff. <laughs> right. And it's, yeah. And, and that's something that, you know, we sort of laugh about, but there's so many new photographers yes. that have no training at no. all. Yeah. Just right. No. Right. Right. Um, that's not frustrating for a guy like me, but, um, yeah, you, you need to have some kind of training. Exactly. Um, and learn, you know, those basic steps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then from a business standpoint, are there any things that you learned and that you would say, man, I, I this is something people should know. Um, stick to your guns. You know, when, when you're new, you, you want to um, get as many clients as you can. You want to make them happy. You will do whatever you can. But at the same time, you want to grow. You can't constantly give everybody they want and, and grow at the same time. So for me, it's setting boundaries, um, which is really hard. You know, email is one thing. When a client sees that you're emailing them at 2 in the morning, they automatically think, oh, she's available at 2 in the morning. I can email then. And then you automatically feel like you have to get back to them. So for me, it's trying to set those boundaries and I'm still working on it. You know, it's, it's definitely a difficult thing. So. All right. Okay. Well, we're out of time. Thank you so much for Thanks joining for us having today. Me. You bet. Thank you. Well, that was our conversation with Kara Lane. Remember, if you want to see more of Kara's work, you can go to caralane.com or just go to the Adorama Learning Center to see all of the uh, gear that she used and more uh, samples of her work. Well, thanks for joining me. Remember, if you have a suggestion for somebody that you'd like to see on how they do that, please send it to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week.
This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.